Good evening, everyone. It's Wednesday, 9 p.m. Brazil time. It's Christmas week, and it's time for class. If you don't know me, my name is Renata. I'm an English teacher, and I have been one for the past 15, almost 16 years. And I'm here to help you leave that okay English behind, that English that, you know, le uh, leaves you feeling insecure at work, um, not confident enough like you are in Portuguese. And I want to help you reach the English that 2% of Brazilian professionals actually speak. So come with me. Today we have a mentoring class. Santa is here to help you, you know, reach the English that you need for your career, for your career goals. And we want you to join actively, participate tonight through the comments or even join us. Join us live here. Tell us about how you have been studying, what is it that you do, and why is it frustrating for you? Why do you think, why you think this is not leading you where you want uh, to be, where you want to get to? So we're going to talk about the rights and the wrongs, the do's and the don'ts, uh, or maybe give you some light, you know, lighten up um, your ways to make, make sure that you are investing your time and getting the compensation for that, okay? So let's get, let's get started. Hello, Anderson. Hi, Gabi, our dear gold digger. I miss you, Gabi. How's it going? Um, hi, Anderson. It's been a while as well. And let's welcome... My dear partner, MC, all the way from Canada. Hi, Fabiola. Hi, Hi partner. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Let's just show you this. Merry Christmas. <laughs> that is so adorable. Look at her. Oh, come on, leave her, leave her with us for a while. She's definitely going to, to make people happy. Leave, leave a little heart here in the, in the, yeah, click on the heart. If you like the little Donna, look at her. She's all like snuggly on you there, closing her eyes. Oh my God, she's so adorable. Whatever we, she's wearing, you know, she doesn't like to wear new stuff. I know. <laughs> Is <laughs> Is that why she looks a little like? Yeah, so maybe we can just screenshot here and that's good. That's gonna be it. Donna, this way, baby. Oh my god. Okay. I'll get oh, I'll get the screenshot later because then the comments won't be there. So let's just smile for the screenshot. Oh, that's so adorable. Anyways, how, how are you, partner? How is the weather there in Canada? We have lots of snow, so it feels like Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it does. I, I mean, it, a lot of snow. I, she, she's not that. She doesn't like spotlight. <laughs> okay. Um, let me just make sure that. So we have snow, which is great because my parents arrived and Marcelo's parents arrived. And then we were, uh, it's actually my mom, my aunt and Marcelo's parents. And then um, we were kind of embarrassed. It's like we brought them all the way from Brazil to Canada. They need to see some snow. <laughs> um, so we have that now. It's great. Awesome. Awesome. This, this filter is the least flattering filter among all of them because I need my mirrored camera to show you my little notes that I have here today. So basically, what are we going to talk about? You all here watching us tonight, we are going to help you. We want to help you. This is the main um, goal, right, at Fluent For Real, is to help you understand what you need to do to reach that English that you want to reach, that you need to reach. And tonight, we are going to, um, to you know, give you the chance to tell us your story. How do you study? What do you do to keep your English as it is or to reach the 2% English? Some people that follow us, they, you know, they're here just to go like, oh, I am taking things slow. I don't actually have a goal right now. I don't need that 2% English right now, but this is what I do. Um, and other people are like, I want this. I really want to reach the 2% English. And I'm going to start with something interesting, a fun fact. Um, I think two days ago, was it two days ago that I posted something on stories? Myth or fact? And the first thing uh, that caught my eye was 
I can study by myself and reach the 2% English. Mm. Is it a fact or a myth? 63%, 63% said it was a fact. It is true. So 63% of our followers believe that they can reach the 2% English by themselves. And how come the people that speak English fluently that have mastered the language that can use English, whatever, however they want to only 2% in Brazil. If you believe it's true, why can't you reach that? What is in between the hope, the desire and the actual, you know, realization of that objective. So that's what caught my eye. This is what, where we get in. This is what we, uh, where we just, pop in your face here on Instagram every week and we want to help you get there. We want to help you reach that path towards the 2% English. All right. So yes, it's true. I truly believe that MC does too, right partner? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We do. We do believe that you can do it on your own. Uh, however, you do need the right method to get there. You, you need, um, you know, some personal, of course, personal effort, dedication, obviously, but it's, it's possible. So how about talking about that tonight? How about that, right? Um, all righty. So let's see here. Uh, okay. So I'm going to start by sharing um, one, one story that was sent to us through our Instagram stories. We opened a, a little box, a question box, and some people sent the, us their story. But you are here with us live. We want you to tell us how you study. What do you watch? What do you listen to? What do you read? I'm just getting the more, the more obvious, concrete actions that most people do. But maybe you have, I don't know, a different style, something else that you like to do to, to study, okay? So how, what is your study routine? What do you do to learn English by yourself? All right? Let us know and we will, we will help you. Um, especially if you were feeling frustrated, like our follower was. MC, check out what he sent through our uh, DM. I feel like I studied in vain. Yes, he said, these are his words, all right? And, uh, you know, curiously enough, he's not a Brazilian. He's a foreigner that follows us. I didn't have a chance to ask him where he's from. I just told him that I would help him. I would uh, share his story here today. But those words were very impactful to me. I feel like I study in vain. Do you feel like you study in vain? Do you feel like the investment of time that you're making is, has been in vain? There's nothing more precious than your time. Money, there's always a new way to make money. Money is hard to make, but in theory, it's endless. It's infinite. Now, your time is not. You have 24 hours in a day and no more than that. Just like me, just like MC, just like everybody. So studying in vain is very impactful to me, hearing that from a student, all right? And what did he say? What else did he say that he does? Um, basically, what he said was, um, I like to study with pen and pencil, mostly, which I found interesting. Watching videos and getting more active studying is not enough for me. It hasn't been enough for me. And then I asked him more questions about it. And he said, um, and he this said is that one person, this is all feedback from one person, one person. And I, but I think that this, this, uh, yeah, one person only. And then he said that he has been trying to do more, like, more active exercises, like pronunciation exercises, you know, and, and things like that. But he feels like he studies in vain. And then, of course, if I had one hour to talk to him about everything that he does or doesn't do, I would be able to give him a more complete, you know, uh, response. I would be able to give him better feedback. But... I caught the, the, you know, the, I'm pinpointing the things that I believe are more um, urgent and that I see more, that I see happening more. So, you know, probably, you know, most likely 
that's where the mistake is. Um, so basically here, what do we need to, to remember when it comes to, um, to learning English? If you can follow us, the feeling that you had when you were in the basic level, let's call the traditional uh, style basic level, is that in very little time, you gained a lot of English because you went from zero to present, past, and future. And when you are at the level, uh, you, when you are exactly where you are right now, you don't have that feeling anymore so much. Why? Because you already know one way to say things. One way. And if you stay um, in that same way of saying things, you never challenge yourself to use other things or you don't push yourself out of the comfort zone, you will always use the same thing. For example... For most Brazilians, present perfect is hard to say, isn't it, MC? It is, because it's counterintuitive. It, we don't use that in Portuguese, so it's hard to relate, you know? It's hard to, to compare with uh, Portuguese. Aside from, I've never done this, or have you ever done that, which is like the key sentence that most people know how to use. How often do you use Brazilians using, how often do you see Brazilian people there in Canada using... I haven't done that because, or have you seen Fulan? Have you seen John and Mary? Or I've been working hard on that, blah, blah, blah. How often do you see them really mastering present perfect, for example? Mm. Trying to do a quick assess assessment here. I would say it's, it's not something that most people master. So you so would say less than 50%. Yeah, like the past, uh, uh, past perfect, for example, it's like, oh, oh, it's it's not even there. It, mm -hmm. don't use it at all. Exactly. So past perfect is not even there. Present perfect is barely there. Yeah. Because we just use the simple past and then we do not go, you know, that extra mile in order to use something more elevated or something more clear cut. So, um, and how do you fix that? You fix that by, and then that's what the suggestion that I have for this student, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce his name correctly, it's Orhen, I think, um, is, how is your feedback going? It's all interconnected. If you are studying, listening, reading, doing exercises, but you are not listening to yourself, you are not self-assessing your own English, like what could be better, what is wrong, what is not accurate, then you think, first of all, you think you are not evolving. You're not sure. Maybe you are. Maybe your English is improving, but you don't really realize it. Or maybe you are really not improving and you need to self-assess. You need to do something about it. So do you have the opportunity? You guys there here in the comments, let me know. Yes or no? Emoji for yes or emoji for no or just a yes or a no. Um, have you ever recorded yourself speaking English? Real life situation to yourself, okay? I'm not saying you're going to record something confidential of, you know, your company at a meeting, something that could get you into trouble. I'm not saying that, of course. Be careful what you're going to record and what you're going to do with that. But have you ever recorded yourself speaking? Ah, Louisa sent here her story. Okay, Liz, I'm going to go, go back to you in a minute, okay? Um, so do you, have you ever recorded yourself? Let me know in the comments, yes or no? Ah, Va said no. Let's see who else. Okay, Louisa said I never recorded myself. Mm, okay. Well, the, the feedback that you get when you listen to yourself is immediate. You go like, oh, I can't believe I said this. You, you are able to identify the mistakes you are able, they, they have a different weight, you know, they have a different like, wow, this is something that I really need to improve much more than when someone tells you to do it. So even though Anderson, Anderson says he has, uh, Ju, no, Anderson is a, is a long time follower here, Anderson. I hope that that, that tip was um, something that you heard from us, hopefully. Oh, Gabi, Gabi is our student. Thanks for the feedback, Gabi. Gabi says, yes, and it is a huge difference since I started studying again. Gabi, thank you so much for the feedback because 
hearing our students say that it has made a difference. Uh, you know, the method tells you to do it and it has been a big difference. So it's really gratifying to us, right MC? Yeah, absolutely. We love so, it. It, it's something simple, recording yourself and listening to yourself while you are speaking spontaneously um, or reading a text, maybe if you're focused on pronunciation, is game changing. It's really a game changer for your English. So don't rely only on input. I need to read. I need to listen. I need to do exercises. I need to practice and forget that you need to see how you're doing to give yourself more motivation to really see that you are evolving, to feel that you are, to give you more motivation to keep studying, you know? So uh, feedback, self-feedback. Don't forget about that, all right? Uh, let's see here. Hi, Bruno, welcome. Welcome to class. And, uh, and honestly, yes, yes, partner, go ahead. Comment that it's like uh, completely out of the subject here. Uh, but you are so you're look you look <laughs> like a gypsy so much <laughs> i do <laughs> as you're saying and because, all i can think about um i'm like all over yeah <laughs> because of the puffy the puffy sleeves and the little cap right i know it, it's the whole thing you you have the whole you were you were, you were wearing a halloween costume <laughs> <laughs> and the Greek eye here as well. <laughs> okay. All right. So Luisa said, I turned all my devices to English, started to watch movies and series without subtitles, started listening to American radio, radio joined Clubhouse, but still with the feeling of not improving. Luisa and everybody, let's analyze all of the actions that she's taking, right? turned her devices to English. So she reads and maybe listens to things in English. Watches movies. She's listening to English. You're listening to English. Okay, Louisa. Without subtitles. Wow. That's great for your listening. Started listening to American radio. Radio. Also input listening. Joined Clubhouse. So you can also listen to native speakers speaking, but still with the feeling of not improving. Everything that you're doing, Louisa, is related to input. All of those actions are related to passive learning. If you want to speak English, you want to produce language, you need to train your brain to produce language. You need to get the, the brain to work out, connect things, you know, through speaking practice and get all of that passive knowledge from the listening into active, and then later on, go to the feedback that I just mentioned to see how you're doing. So let's get a, one example, right? One small example. Um, let's see here. Pronunciation. I think it's the most relatable one. Pronunciation. Mm -hmm. All of that listening practice will be amazing to help you Listen to correct pronunciation and identify correct pronunciation. So when you hear someone says, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a do this. I'm a, I'm gonna do this. I'm, I wanna, you know what it means. And then you are able to reproduce that. Awesome. But you need to reproduce that. You need to find ways to reproduce that. How is, uh, how can you do that? One little, uh, exercise that you can do, right? You're going to get a, a, an extract from a blog post, from a TED talk, a transcript from a TED talk. You're going to read that out loud, listening to yourself. If you can get a reference like a TED talk where you watch the video, you listen to the person speaking, you have access to the text, and then you read the text, and you can compare your pronunciation to the person's pronunciation if that person is a role model, of course, a native speaker or someone with great English. Um, then you will be able to give yourself the feedback that you need to see, should I practice this more? Should I go word by word? What are the words that I am mispronouncing that are not really cool for me, but which ones am I pronouncing correctly? So when you do that, you are transforming only 
passive studying into something productive and practical here. Uh, you are producing more language. Pronunciation, okay, one step. We're not talking about grammar or free conversation, you know, nothing like that. But it's one step. Definitely, you will see improvement. You will feel my pronunciation is better today than it was yesterday. And MC, pronunciation is not something that we change overnight, right? No, definitely not. It's something we work on. But at the same time, when you realize that your pronunciation is refining, it's a great feeling, isn't it? Oh, my God, it's the best. <laughs> say contribute instead of contribute. Oh, my God, it's rewarding. <laughs> so, Luis, I really hope that was helpful, okay? I don't want to overwhelm you with too many things to do, but just keep that in mind. All of the actions you're taking are passive. If you want to speak English, you need to go to the, part, the production part and also get to the feedback part to see if you're doing things right or wrong, if you need to redo them. Because we have this crazy idea. We don't believe in Santa. Santa Claus, <laughs> children believe in Santa. That's so cute. But we think that we're going to learn things the first time we, we hear them, the first time we see them. That's not going to happen. I mean, unless you're a genius, because it doesn't happen to me. Does it happen to you, MC? Mm -mm. You listen to the word one time, you get, oh, that's what it means. And tomorrow you're already using it every chance you get. Oh, poor me. No. No, of course not. So we need to review the cycle. Go back to the cycle one more time, you know, or two or three, not one more time. Sorry. A couple more times. So, Luis, I hope that was helpful. Um, let's see here. Okay, um, Teresa is saying, my actual challenge is to use correctly all terms of the, uh, all the terms of the international policies for the clim climate protection and international agreements. I think that's what she meant, climate. Um, well, technical vocabulary um, is, I don't know how long you have been working in English, with those terms, but I think I'm going to ask MC to respond to, to comment on this MC about technical vocabulary, you know, and the journey there. It's the easiest part. I was hoping you were going to say that. I was like, well, is she going to say what I, what I would say? <laughs> Folks, uh, like understanding a specific vocabulary because you're embedded in that environment and you hear that all the time. It's a matter of learning new words. Um, it, it, it would be the same uh, as, I don't know, talking to a doctor, trying to understand all the procedures that they are going through with uh, a patient or something. Um, they have a lot of specific vocabulary that you just ask. And, and then over time, you pick it up so easily. Uh, found, work on, on your foundation uh, is way more challenging than picking up new vocabulary. Yeah, it's a matter of time, right? Mm -hmm. If you're enjoying the class, click on the heart here, leave your story. How do you study? What is it that you do that is not helping you or you think it helps, but you're not so sure? You want to make sure that it does help. Like what Louisa said, all the input that she's getting is amazing. But maybe if she invests a little less time on the input, a little more time on the practice and the feedback, she will be able to get, you know, to reach places. Yeah, and just, just so I can explain, because some people, uh, they don't know where I work or, or something like that. I came from, I come from a mining industry, and in Brazil, we have open pit mines, and here we have underground mines. And I had to learn not only the vocabulary uh, from Portuguese to English, but I also had to learn the whole, uh, the whole new process because it's completely different. Uh, and that was challenging. Yes, that was, but it it took me like a couple of months to pick up everything I needed and, and that's it. I mean, mm -hmm. so go, just going back here to the, nowadays. and I, I'm working on, on a lot of foundation stuff because it's the challenging piece. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's what she's doing. She's systematizing the knowledge. I'm trying to organize all new vocabulary that I have found in, in all the documents. That is a great way to do it. You are systematizing the new stuff so that you can, quickly easily reach that vocabulary and remember 
which is which, right? And use it. I, I would definitely recommend that you did that. So you will pick up on things faster because you will have your own dictionary, which is something that I recommend here at Fluent for Real too. We recommend in the method. Um, we don't need to know all the words of the English language. We need to know the words that we use on a daily basis at work. So, uh, you know, you know uh, considering that, having our own dictionary makes a lot of sense. So you can not just use the pen and pencil like Orhan said, but also uh, make sure that um, it's all there, you know, compiled in one easy, quick place to access for you to review the cycle. Go back to the beginning and glance at the, the little dictionary and go, oh, that's right. That's what it means. I haven't used this word in a long time. I want to expand my vocabulary and get out of my comfort zone. Um, okay, Anderson said, I thought watching TV shows would help me more to learn vocabulary, but I get totally lost. <laughs> I, I always say, Anderson, that um, in order to, to make that time of uh, watching a video productive, we usually think, oh, watching a, a, a one-hour show is like studying for one hour. No, you're getting one hour of input. But where is the, where is the practice uh, and where's the feedback? Why not get 10 minutes of that TV show, 20 minutes, and pick up one vocabulary, one piece of vocabulary, one little word, one expression, and bring that into your own system? And then it's, it's a whole new thing, okay? Like how to do it. it I would have to have another, another class to explain that. But pick that, put it in your own little dictionary and do the steps. Review the cycle, blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't be able to do that, to explain that right now. But anyway, so it will actually be systematized, not lost in that 60, in those 60 minutes. And you're like, I watched a show last night. I remember that I learned two or three, five, 10 words, but... I can't recall them. I can't really uh, tell you what I learned last night. At least that's what happens to me. Whenever I hear something new, I'm like, oh, that's a cool word. If I don't write it down, if I don't systematize that new vocabulary, I'm just going to forget it. And then it feels like a waste of time. You know? Hi, Vinicius. We also have another student here. Tell us, do you feel like you study in vain? What is it that you do? I'm just going to, go, going to go back to finish here our live lesson. If you guys bring something new here to me, I'm going to gladly respond and comment and tell you what to do, what not to do. But uh, I just want to go back to the myths and the facts that I, I posted, and I wanted to hear your opinion on that. And one uh, interesting one was here. Uh, about grammar exercises. Grammar exercises, that was the sentence. Grammar exercises are boring, but we need them. 80% of the followers, of our followers, said that's true. Grammar exercises are boring, but we need them. Which was surprising to me, MC. I thought most people would say like, no, we don't need grammar exercises. They are really? boring. 100% of people would say it's necessary, regardless. I w I'm shocked that we have 20% there. <laughs> yes, we do. We do have 20% that don't really trust grammar exercises. Okay. Well, like I said, it, you know, it's the myths and the semi-myths. Yeah. Like, it's, a ha it's half true, half false. When you concentrate on grammar, 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 grammar exercises, true or false, mark the correct option, blah, 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 you are getting important practice. You are making your brain think on top of the input that you got before, previously. You have to think on top of that, make decisions like, wait, no, this is, this is not right because remember the teacher said that I cannot use this together with this in the negative or in the affirmative. So, mm, all right. It does give you some kind of training and it forces your brain to think. But the problem is uh, most people stop there and, and think, tomorrow I'm going to be able to use this knowledge. I've made that mistake. And I've that is hard 
uh, grammar for so long and it, it didn't get me to where I wanted to be. But later on, I, I was kind of grateful, but for so long, it, it didn't get me to the fluency that I needed. Yeah, exactly. So it's one level of practice. We always say that uh, we have the first level of practice, which will, you know, trigger your brain to think about solutions, associate things, separate things, what can be used together, what cannot be used together. All right. But then we need a second level of practice, which requires more from you. It doesn't require only identifying the right and the wrong, identifying the verb tense, option A, B, C, and D. It requires that you have a blank space and you have to remember the whole sentence, the whole construction, everything. You are going to recall the information, not just identify the information, all right? So recalling is harder than choosing an option. Even if it's a grammar exercise, okay? It's harder than the other option of a grammar exercise where you have options, multiple choice. So second level of practice would be more challenging in that sense. You have to recall the information. Whether it's a grammar exercise or a pronunciation exercise or a speaking exercise, it doesn't matter, okay? I'm giving grammar as an example. Um, <laughs> Otavio likes my, my cap. And thanks, Otavio. He said, I love your live lesson. Woohoo! Awesome. We love to have you here. Um, so bottom line. I'm keeper uh, here. 730. What, Let me be the timekeeper here. 737 or 937. Okay, okay. So this is the, the, the last thing I'm going to uh, say to wrap up the class. So bottom line is grammar exercises are boring but are needed. Great. But they are the first level of practice. You got to have the second level of practice and the third level of practice, which is free speaking. Nothing to, to control, nothing to give you like, okay, I am in a very controlled environment, a lab a book, I'm responding questions, great, right answer, wrong answer. No, it's, it's the simulation of real life. It's the simulation of a meeting. It's a conversation class with purpose, with purpose. We have a video about that, about how to do conversation classes properly. I can link that on stories later, okay? It's here and on YouTube as well. Um, but that's the third level of practice. And the fourth, that's real life, baby. That's you at a meeting. That's you at a, you know, on a phone call, on a video call with a client, with your boss, with a supplier. I don't know who you, you need to talk to or who you might need to talk to one day. So that's a level four. And then here, it's always a learning opportunity as well, right, MC? You know that more than anyone. You can say, you can talk about that more than me. Um, so it is a learning opportunity as well. But of course, you have real life feedback, You may have, you may feel embarrassed. You may, may, may feel nervous. Someone may tell you that your English is not so, so good, you know? So anyway, don't forget that practice also has levels of challenge, levels of demand, levels of, you know, getting deeper and dip, deeper into what your brain needs to do and getting more complex. Don't forget that, okay? So they are important. Yes, but they're just one level. You need more to reach the 2% English. Wow, I think I'm done now. Yes, and someone is very much alive and kicking here. <laughs> That's very fine. Moment. I'm fine. <laughs> All right, so everybody, thank you so much for participating, for commenting. If you still want, uh, you know, any feedback and help, don't be shy. Send us through through. Um, Instagram, uh, DM, DM us. Jesus Christ, my brain is like, woo. Okay, send us a message. Tell us your story. I will be glad to respond through Instagram stories, okay? And help you uh, break any myths, go the right way, get the right direction, get, the right, get on the right path towards the 2% English because we don't want you to be wasting your time investing incorrectly, you know, investing your time so precious incorrectly. And Otavio said that he lost a very good job opportunity because he's not fluent in English. Otavio, you need to become a gold digger. Come on, don't, enough of that. I don't want to hear that anymore. I want 
you to tell us in 2022 that you got the job opportunity that you wanted, okay? Huh? That's what I want to, Otavio. Wishing, wishing you all the good luck in the world, but stay with us. You're in good hands. Yes, I feel so sad when I hear stories like that. You know, I, I missed an opportunity. I lost this, this job that I wanted. Um, you know, I feel really, really sad because I wish we didn't have to get, you know, live that situation to, you know, to change things. And Gabi is saying that Fluent for You is the best. Oh, Gabi, you're the best, our dear student. <laughs> Thanks so much, Gabi, for staying. You stayed the whole class today too, right? We miss you. Okay, MC, thank you so much for joining all the way from Christmassy, snowy Canada. Um, yeah. I want a picture from your window, an updated one. Small morning. Okay, is, is it like snowy, whitey, and Christmassy? Oh, okay. So send me a picture tomorrow. I'll post it to everybody here on Story so we feel a little bit of the warmth all the way from Canada, the, the cold warmth of snow. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Otav, Gabi, Luis Felipe Anderson, Luisa for participating as well. And also Orhan who sent us um, the first one that I commented on, right? So everybody, Merry Christmas. Have an amazing uh, night and day, right? May your days be filled with love, be filled with accomplishments, dreams. May your family be healthy, you know, and happily uh, ever after throughout the next uh, year, right? And so on. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and happy holidays, folks. Yes. So we'll see you next week, Wednesday, 9 p.m. Brazil time. 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye, partner. Bye-bye.